The Alabama Crimson Tide is back from Christmas break, and so are Jimmy and I. So hope everybody had a Merry Christmas. It's time to get your game face on. Locked on Bama, your daily podcast on the Alabama Crimson Tide. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hey, everybody, and welcome back into Locked On Bama. Luke Robinson, that's me. Jimmy Stein, that's him. Jimmy, how are you today? Oh, I am great. Fun time of the year for me. Love the flipping of the calendar. And, hey, we get to play one more football game. One more football game, and we get to play with all our players. I mean, the, the ones that are able to play, that's awesome. I mean, that I can't stress enough how excited I am that Bryce and Will Anderson and Brian Branch and Jordan Battle and all those and Jameer Gibbs are all going to play. This episode is brought to you by LinkedIn, and we want to thank you for making us your first listen. And, uh, look, just keep carrying on with us into the new year, man. We appreciate it. Yeah, I look a little disheveled. Yeah, I went to go pick up three of my children uh, because their flights were canceled. They couldn't get here before Christmas, so I had to go pick them up and – the middle of nowhere, Kentucky, in the middle of an ice storm today. So, yeah, if you're thinking, hey, Luke looks a little rough. Well, I did two Christmases, one yesterday and one today, and I had to drive uh, 11 and a half hours today. So back off, man. Back off with your holiday criticisms. Anywho, uh, now that that's out of the way, um, Jimmy, we have not discussed. I thought that that Vince Vaughn, Reese Witherspoon movie, Four Christmases. That's like a documentary to us. <laughs> you have to go to like all the various parents. Yeah, we do. We do. We do. Uh, and, and and we do it in four different cities, technically. Shreveport, Meridian, uh, Mobile, and Daphne. And we, li- and we live in Tuscaloosa. Yeah, that's true. Um, as you can tell by your backdrop, which is clearly yeah. not a green screen thing. Um, so- which, which is hilarious because literally... 15 feet behind me is a window, and on the other side of that window is literally Bryant Denny Stadium. Why I haven't, why I choose the cartoon over the real McCoy is a good question for my therapist. Um, so Jimmy, we haven't talked about uh, we we uh, pontificated and uh, predicted that Desmond Ricks would pick Alabama. He eventually did pick Alabama, which is awesome. The number two rated defensive back in this class, right behind Cormani McLean, who, to my knowledge, has not signed anywhere yet. Is I don't want yeah, to get off track here. Is that true? That's to my knowledge. Although, okay. as you said, I'm starting to question my own knowledge. But yeah, no, I don't think Romani signed in the early period. So he'll be he'll be like all the focus of the late period. And Alabama's in on it. Alabama's in on it. I, I'm, I, I've i yet to determine whether I should be optimistic because we have kind of a long way to go there. So I'm not even going to really think about it for a while. But uh, but no, Alabama is in it for Cormani McLean. I would not say at this point I'm aware of information that would make Alabama the favorite. Yeah, I'm, I'm with you on that. Now, people have asked us on Twitter, and by the way, thanks to everybody who's uh, written us recently on Twitter or tweeted at us or whatever you do uh, in Elon Musk, Musk's world. But um, we appreciate all you guys. Uh, and I responded to one of them that, look, I don't think I don't think Cormani's going to end up at Alabama. And I still don't think that. That doesn't mean he won't, though. I, I'd be willing to bet – that Notre Dame thought they were getting Peyton Bowen, and then Oregon thought they were getting Peyton Bowen when he flipped on signing day, and then Oklahoma eventually got Peyton Bowen when he sent his paperwork to Oklahoma. So, I mean, things get weird in NIL times. Um, uh, what is it? The, the other Uyunglele uh, actually committed to Oregon sort of out of the blue and signed with Oregon. I mean, everybody thought for sure he was going to Ohio State or USC. He ends up going to Oregon. Um, you, you just don't know what's going to happen in these times. So, Kamarni McLean is still out there. Now, let's go back to Desmond Ricks, though. Um, what are what do you see are the biggest positives for Desmond Ricks? The the let's all remind everybody too that Desmond Ricks has reclassified. So, meaning he should be a senior in high school next year. Now, right. I don't know what his actual age is. I guess I can look that up while I let you talk about. Uh, I know his, he's older. He's older. He's at the right age. Okay. To graduate okay. now. He's okay. at the right age. I, I think he's 18 right now, okay. actually. Oh, he's either 18 now or or literally almost turning 18. But uh I, I do know that he's the right age to graduate, but he he did not finish all of his high school eligibility. So he could have returned to play high school. He chose to go ahead and graduate and obviously had the academics to do that, which is all that really matters. And uh yeah. man, what what a 
what an unbelievable post signing day pickup for Alabama because Desmond Ricks is a completely legitimate five star. What I mean by that is there's not too much of a doubt as to what 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 his rating should be. Uh, recruited by everybody, he's just physically real gifted dude, sort of the prototype for the spot. Long, fast, athletic, stage and rip pocket, ball skills. Uh, cornerback really is probably of all the positions, you know, the best athletes in football play that spot, in my opinion. And Des is up there with that. Uh, he would be a guy who could play early uh, if the need be. Uh, and since he was a little short on high school experience uh, and with Alabama returning Kool-Aid McKinstry, Terry on Arnold, and very possibly Eli Ricks, uh, I don't think that Desmond Ricks is a guy that will certainly play right away, but he could. He could. He might be too good to keep off the field. Uh, he might just earn the spot. But uh, what, what a true, legit five-star pickup. And for the millionth time, no, no, he is not related to Eli Ricks in any way. There will be a D-Ricks on his jersey and an E-Ricks on Eli's jersey should Eli come back. But they are not, uh, they are not brothers. Uh, one is from Virginia. The other is from California. They just happen to uh, both play at IMG Academy at various points. So big, big pickup. Uh, I, I would call Dez a six-star. Uh, before we started calling them five star pluses at on three, uh, and, and I'm going to go with five star plus because uh, I'm, I'm a company man. Uh, but Des, uh, boy, what a pickup! Recruiting class, Luke, probably the best one of uh, of the whole Saban era, which is sort of like saying, "Hey, you know, of all those old Celtics teams, this one was the best one." I mean, uh, the, the the best of the Saban recruiting class is a ridiculous title for any any group to get, but this. This group could uh, could very well be that. Um, so yeah, that that just adds to Alabama's unbelievable class, as you mentioned. Um, and and we've been doing superlatives. We'll continue to do that uh, more this week. But for now, we just wanted to you know sort of get back up to speed since we did take a few days off for Christmas, just like the rest of you did. So don't 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 jump our case about that. Don't don't do it. Just don't do it. Um, Jimmy, I want to tell everybody about LinkedIn. Right now, uh, look, LinkedIn jobs is where you need to be. If you're looking for the perfect candidate, LinkedIn will have it for you. There's no doubt in these days, every new potential hire can feel like a high stakes wager for your small business. You want to be 100 percent certain that you have the access to the best qualified candidates available. That's why you have to check out LinkedIn jobs. LinkedIn jobs helps you find the right people for your team faster and for free. LinkedIn jobs helps you find the qualified candidates you want to talk to and helps you find them faster. Post your job for free at linkedin.com slash locked on college. That's linkedin.com slash locked on college. LinkedIn.com slash locked on college to post your job for free. Terms and conditions may, and I bet they do apply. Okay. So just looking back over the class, and we're gonna just we're not gonna go into superlatives or anything, but I do think um, I want to go back into this class for a second. Uh, you know, we we did talk about who our favorite gets were and things like that. But man, I mean, just you add Desmond Ricks to this bunch with uh, Quay Russo, James Smith, Caden Proctor, Keon Keeley, Caleb Downs. Uh, Jimmy, is there anybody left uh, outside of Cormani McLean who we've already talked about? Is there anybody left that you think Alabama could be looking at in the late period? I mean, this could be the most uneventful late period. I'm trying to look down uh, the top 100 as I'm talking about this. Now, Nicholas Harbor, who I – I love Nicholas Harbor, by the way, from Maryland, Washington, D.C., 6'5", 225. He is a – now, he may be a jack-of-all-trades, master of none, but it's a really big jack. I mean, he is a big, big jack. He is the um, master of all of them, frankly. <laughs> so there's um, there's also Deuce Robinson, the, uh, the tight end Alabama has been mentioned with, but I don't think Alabama's really in on that. Um, and then, man, then you go a long way. Uh, I'm, I was looking at Cormani McLean. He's still technically committed to Miami, I guess, but he's he's not signed. In the top 50, the two guys I just mentioned are the only two left. They're the I'm only two sure. left. Really? Um, yeah. I mean, that's There's bananas. A- I mean, this, this late period could really just be a sack full of grits. I mean, talking about nothing. Roderick Pleasant, a cornerback, from California. Um, I've heard his name out there, but I think that's just Alabama fans being wishful. Um, I don't know that there's anybody else Alabama's really died for it. So maybe it's nothing, it's transfer portal or bust after this. 
Yeah, I think there will be a lot of focus on the transfer portal uh, for a couple of things. When Alabama gets back uh, from New Orleans, we'll have a really good idea about who's going pro, who's staying, who else is getting in the portal. There is still time to get into the portal. Here, here's a good primer for people uh, to really understand the portal situation. You have until like January 15th or 16th, somewhere around that date, to get in the portal. And it's very important that you're in the portal before that date. You must be in the portal before that date in this window to be eligible to play this fall. So if you're going into the portal, get in now. Alabama is free to sign guys in the portal or take guys out of the portal and add them to Alabama at any point. At any point, you can do that. Um, but you have to be in the portal before the expiration, January 15th, 16th, to be eligible next fall. The portal window will again open in April. Same rules, open only for two weeks in April. You can hop in in that two-week period and still be eligible for the fall. But as I say, Alabama can sign people at any time, Luke. Uh, there is still school. I know that shocked some fans that these kids actually go to college. Uh, they actually go to school. And the fact of the matter is the new semester starts right around January 9th or 10th. is the start of the new spring semester. Uh, you don't have to be enrolled and go into class on January 9th or 10th to make it. I think there's some drop dead date that's later in January to be enrolled and be a full-time student at Alabama, what you need to be to be on scholarship and be on the football team. So even though you could sign a kid out of the kid, you know, to have him in school for the spring and to go through your strength and conditioning, to go through spring practice, Alabama would need to add those kids out of the portal, uh, you know, prior to probably somewhere around that January 20th date, I'm assuming somewhere around there. Uh, interestingly enough, Alabama could get its first commitment from the portal as soon as tomorrow, which is Tuesday. Some of you are probably listening to this show on Tuesday. So to be today, I think it's uh, as early as 9 or 10 a.m. on uh, Tuesday, we'll hear from Maryland tight end C.J. Dupree. Uh, C.J. will decide between Alabama and, and Ohio State and announce it to the world uh, tomorrow. Uh, he is Alabama's one and only uh, big time target uh, in the portal that we're aware of at this point. I'm sure Alabama is evaluating many, many kids in the portal, but uh, but those kids on January 10th, I mean, but CJ Dupree is the only kid that we know for sure uh, that Alabama is interested in for right now. Again, I think that that list is likely to expand after the bowl game, after Alabama has a better handle on who exactly is coming back and who's leaving. Uh, as far as signing people in the late period, as, late, as Luke brought up, uh, Cormani McLean will probably be the sole focus uh, for Alabama and a lot of schools uh, between now and signing day. He really has created a market for himself by doing this. By the way, I hope other top recruits take notice about the extra attention, maybe even extra NIL deals that that, that Cormani can uh, can you know by being the only kid available on the block, right? I mean, it's uh, what are the old jokes about? You know, the three, it's closing time and. And, uh, and, and even the, uh, the threes and the fours will look better, right? Uh, so to speak, and, and I'm referring to myself, not, not anyone else. Uh, but, uh, you know, Cormani has kind of developed a market for himself uh, by doing this, and uh, there'll be a lot of attention. Alabama in it. I, w I don't have any information right now that, that tells me Alabama leads, but Alabama in it. I think one interesting late name, Luke, and this is just me talking. This is not Alabama by any means. As a matter of fact, I'm guessing Alabama has seen this guy in the past. There is an in-state kid I'm interested in, and I'm going to watch more film today. Uh, if Alabama is short anywhere, to me, it's the offensive line. And uh, this particular kid isn't uh, a big-time prospect yet. Uh, but there is a kid from Clark County, which is a small school in Alabama. His name is Caden Arnold. Uh and he, he plays at Clark County, I believe. He has some good FBS offers. I believe he just got back from a trip to Coastal Carolina, which is a good group of five school. Uh, I think Caden's pretty interesting. Um, I don't know that he's camped at Alabama. And, and for all I know, Alabama's looked at him and said, uh, and, uh, that this guy's just not, not for us. But uh, 6'7", 340. He's a big boy. Long arms. Long arms. Uh, strong. I mean, he he's interesting to me. I'm very surprised that his offer list doesn't look different for, from watching his tape. He was a guy I picked out, by the way, last September as a guy that might blow up. He did make the All-State team, so this is an accomplished player on the field. I think he might be worth a, a, another look just because 
you're short on the offensive line, you probably have the spot. Again, he's going to sign somewhere in February, probably in the Sun Belt group of five. But, you know, he's he's big enough, I'll tell you that. You know, it's funny, um, you talk about the NIL stuff with Cormani McLean and um Man, that that was dominating a lot of sports talk. You know, I was on the road 11 and a half hours a day. So I listened to a lot of sports talk and they were talking about, the, you know, the Drake May thing, um, which Drake May has come out and basically debunked. Um, right. If something is bunk, then you debunk it, as George Costanza told us all. And um, so he but, you know, they were like, yeah, we we think Cade May. I mean, Drake May is telling the truth. Sure. But something was going on. Like it may not have been five million. And he was like, and and some of the hosts were thinking, okay, how long will it be before a player sues the NCAA? Now, Jimmy, you're the law talking guy, not me. I don't even know if this is a viable thing. How long will it be before somebody sues the NCAA and is like, you know, why do I have to be limited by the amount of years you say I have? Why, do I have to, why can't I just keep playing college ball? I'm making money doing this now. I'm, you know, if you are, let's say, uh, Stetson Bennett, I'm picking him out of the blue. You have no future in the NFL, most likely. Now, people said he had no future in college, and he did pretty well. But let's tend like Stetson Bennett is not going to make it in the pros because I think that's a fair assessment. Um, but if, what if Stetson Bennett said, I'm making – Four and a half million dollars a year at Georgia. I'm never going to make that anywhere else. So why can't I just keep doing this as my career? Now, I know what a lot of people are thinking. This is stupid. That's not college. There's so much stuff that's not college anymore. I'm just wondering if we're going to get to that point. It wasn't a bad point. No, we can hypo- hypothetical it to death that it's not a bad point uh, in the sense that as we move closer towards what looks like minor league, what looks like the G League in basketball or what looks like minor league baseball. Uh, It's all going to start looking more like that and less like these kids go to college and play football on the side, which is sort of how we built this thing a hundred years ago. And it sort of was that way for a long time. And it's inched to what we have now, right? And in some ways didn't inch towards, in some ways it lurched towards what we have now because there was a refusal to inch towards some sort of common ground. Now we're stuck with massive change overnight because there was no incremental change like there should have been. But there is no question, Luke, that as we move to something that looks like absolutely minor league sports, the preparing ground for the NFL, uh, that we will have more questions like that. Why are they going to school at all. Why are we now requiring them to go to school and be on scholarship to go to school when instead of being in school, we could just pay them the money uh, that tuition costs because so many of them don't want to go to class and go to school anyway. And, you know, I hate all of it because, you know, I still value that college education greatly. Uh, The vast, vast, vast majority of these kids that play college football, a professional football in the NFL, and they will need jobs in retail and management and engineering and, 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 and airline pilots and doctors and lawyers and, 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 and iron sculptor sellers and refurbishers. <laughs> they will need to be doing stuff like that and not playing football. And, you know, it's one of my, you know, we don't have time for, for a long rant, but it's one of my big things that that I've said all along, not new, all along, for as long as I can remember, it seems like we make so many of college football rules for kids like Bryce Young and Caleb Williams and Trevor Lawrence and and, and the superstars of the game, and we need to change the rules because things aren't fair for them. And those guys represent 1% of 1% of all players. Uh, The rules also apply to the third team outside linebacker at, at Bowling Green. And, and, and there's more of him than there are of Bryce Young's. And when we change the rules but straight up for Bryce, it affects that guy too, you know, good and, and, and poorly. So uh, college football is vast. It's not a small thing. It's not the stars at Alabama. That's not college football. College football is also the kids that don't play very much at Rutgers. Jimmy, let me tell everybody about Bet 
betonline.net. Betonline.net is where you want to go to get that bet in for real. It's right there in the name, betonline.net. Go there ASAP. It's where the game starts. Look, you want to uh, put a bet in on these bowl games? Man, go to betonline.net. You want to bet on NBA basketball, which is heating up? It always does right after Christmas. Go get on betonline.net. You want to bet on some NFL playoff action coming up? Betonline.net. You want to bet on any of that stuff, any soccer, golf, uh, MLB, when it comes back, all that. It's all available at betonline.net. You can also play poker. You can play blackjack. You can do teasers and parlays, whatever you want to do. Betonline.net has it all, and it's all there for you. Betonline.net is where the game starts. All right, Jimmy. Um, you know, I'm, I'm going to call an audible here. Omaha, Omaha. Uh, because our good buddy, Joseph Hastings, who works with you there at On3, he came out with a good article. said, an early look at Alabama recruiting in the 2024 class. Because, look, Jerry, I've said this a gazillion times on the podcast. Jerry Seinfeld said it best. Men don't care what's on TV. We only care what else is on TV. That's why we always are using the guide. And so now that the 2023, cl- 20, yeah, 2023 class is signed, you know what everybody's talking about? 2024. Like nobody's really doing anything right. on 2023 anymore. So he talks about a uh, breakdown of Alabama commitments thus far. Perry Thompson from down there in your neck of the woods or you, your old neck of the woods uh, mm-hmm. from Foley who is probably the best wide receiver, maybe the best player to come out of Foley since Julio Jones, I'd say. Uh, Martavius Collins, a four-star tight end. I know everybody, like, is every time somebody says, four-star tight end, sign with Alabama, everybody goes, praise Jesus. I mean, we just, we love a tight end. I don't know what the deal is. Uh, Jalen Mbakwe, a five-star from uh, Clay Chalkville, absolutely fantastic player. Uh, love him. And Julian Sayan, a five-star quarterback from out in California, along with Sterling Dixon, from also down in the Mobile area. Uh, he is uh, he's a good player. Now, some of the guys that he's talking about that have been associated with Alabama recently, Daniel Hill from Meridian, Mississippi. You know Meridian area very well. He's got Alabama in his top ten. Uh, Daniel Calhoun, the number three offensive tackle uh, in the class, is a native of Georgia, but apparently he's uh, – let's see where he's actually playing high school right now because um, – it, he's actually – well, I guess he is playing in Georgia. I don't know why it went out of its way to tell me he's a native of Georgia when he, he's just a – I mean, it was like he was going to lead me somewhere else. Um, Charles Lester, Ellis Robinson, K.J. Bolden. Uh, K.J. Bolden specifically is from that Buford High School in, uh, in Georgia that is just absolutely loaded every single year. Um, he's absolutely fantastic. So, yeah. Uh, those are some good players. And then there's Demarcus Riddick uh, from the Clanton area, <clears throat> Chilton County uh, High School. He's fantastic. He's committed to Georgia. Um, right. And Alabama just didn't offer him. I mean, he's really, really good. I can tell you that. I know Benjamin Russell played against him. He's really, really good. Good player. Uh, that, that's far from over. I'm not predicting a flip. It could flip. You know, at this time a year ago or roughly a year ago, Raquez uh, McElderry was committed to Georgia without an Alabama offer, and Alabama would later offer, and he flipped. So it, it's it's hardly unprecedented uh, that Alabama would offer later. So he is, and I get asked all the time, why did Alabama offer that? Watch the tape. Look how good he is. Uh, he does look good on tape, and Alabama may offer him just on the tape alone at some point or after meeting him. But the fact of the matter is, no matter how many times we say it, hopefully a lot of prospects listen to the show. You should you'll. you'll You'll learn a lot from 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 Luke, um, you know, for, for sure. Uh, look, if you want to play football for Alabama, go to their camp. Go to their camp. Go, go camp at Alabama, and it's the best route to, to one day play football for Alabama. This kid has not gone to camp at Alabama. He never has. He went to camp at Georgia, but apparently. Uh, but, but he has not camped at Alabama. So that, that that's 100% the reason. Uh, you know, in terms of uh, why is an Alabama offered him, uh, they would, I'm sure they would love the opportunity to evaluate him. Uh, but most of their evaluations take place in camp, and that explains that. Now, that being said, there are kids that do end up at Alabama that never camp there. It's not a unicorn. It's not Bigfoot. It, it, it has happened, um, and, and we'll see if it happens with DeMarcus Riddick. There's going to be some junior days on campus in January and Alabama will be able to eyeball some of these kids. Some of the offers happen at that stage, Luke. So uh, we may see DeMarcus uh, offered by Alabama in January. The real 
uh, work on the 24 class is beginning now. So we're going to see more and more in-state kids like him offered, uh, really like the pass rusher from Vestavia Hills. Uh, I think that's an interesting kid, too. A lot of, a lot of interesting kids in the in-state class, and as we know, Alabama's already got three. I sort of like that teammate that uh, Mbakwe has at Clay Chalko, Mario Craver. I think he's he's a, a possibility to be offered in this 24 group. Small, uh, which isn't normally Saban's thing, but fast, and we have been trying to add a lot of speed outside at wide receiver. Mario Craver can really run, so uh, he's interesting, and in, uh, in a of course, Daniel Hill, who Luke mentioned before, he's one of my favorite. Big, big back, big, uh, nearly Derrick Henry big. This great athlete likes Alabama a ton. Uh, if we gave him the green light and pushed him and pushed him, and I, I think there's a good chance he ends up in the class like Derrick Henry, there will be some discussion that Daniel Hill will play other spots at Alabama. But like Derrick Henry, I think he will get his first look at running back, and it's very likely he'll never be moved from there. Uh, he's an interesting one, but already five commitments in the 24 class. That's a heck of a start, Luke. Probably end up signing around 25 again. So uh, you already got five down and only 20 to go in a year to put it together. And Mario Craver, you talked about uh, – I love him, by the way. Uh, man, Clay Togwell has put out some dudes at wide receiver recently. That's Coral White is at Tennessee – uh, he played for him. Uh, Jalen Mbakwe obviously plays for him now. And then Mario Craver, too. And uh, Craver was all set, it seemed like, to commit to Tennessee. And, and he held off for some reason. A lot of people uh, wonder if it wasn't because Alabama was like, hey, chill for a minute. Let's see what happens here. But I don't know if that's the reason. I just know that that's out there. But, Jimmy, that's going to do it for today's podcast. First of all, want to thank everybody for signing up recently. We're over the 3,300 mark. Appreciate that on the subscribers. We appreciate you sticking with us this whole time. Uh, Jimmy and I really do appreciate you guys. I mean, especially the ones that have been with us since the very beginning, but the new ones too. We love y'all. Um, so we will keep doing this as long as you'll have us. And uh, Jimmy, we'll be back tomorrow. We'll try and get a podcast out early tomorrow uh, because this one was a little late today because of all my traveling and stuff. So uh, I will talk to you in the morning, buddy. Roll tight. Roll tight. Roll tight.